Hey guys, what's up? Good morning. My caffeine. Cheers. Hmm. Alright, so this uh, video is uh, kind of a response towards uh, Doug Wolf, personally, uh, the co-founder of Dime Bolt. And uh, I want to say, hey, what's up? Thank you for getting a hold of me. Now, uh, I got invited to a Zoom call meeting with him and his uh, developers about uh, me showing how I use Time Bolt in my workflow and all that. I cannot make it and also the way how I use Time Bolt, I feel like there's too much to explain in a Zoom call meeting. So I just figured like I feel more comfortable making a video showing you my workflow. That way, you know, I can edit out the boring crap and then just show you uh, the more important parts of my workflow, right? Now, I mainly work for Paul's Hardware. Uh, he's a tech YouTuber. Uh, he has over 1 million subscribers. Basically, his overall channel is focused on building PCs, doing reviews on tech-related stuff, right? So when I go and film at his house, for the most part, we usually end up using multiple cameras. Uh, usually we use two cameras, sometimes three, and also he uses a lavalier mic when he does his videos, right? Because he does a lot of tutorials. Some of these videos can take up to five hours to film. So there's a lot of like stop and go when it comes to like uh, recording his projects, right? So we have like a lot of individual clips throughout the day that towards the end of the day when I have to edit it, you know, I have a lot of clips I have to sync up together and then I have to, you know, edit all that down towards a, you know, obviously a more reasonable time to view, right? Obviously the thing I like about Time Boat is mainly that you're able to drop an individual clip and then it cuts out the silence, right? However, the thing with that is when I work with Paul and his projects, there are a bunch of many individual clips. So obviously <laughs> dropping each, each individual clip inside a time bolt to cut out the silence is not, it's going to take up a lot of time, right? So what I do first is basically I use a software called Pluralize. I drop all my footage in here. I sync it up, export an XML file and start Premiere Pro. Then from there, then from there I edit everything down, right? So I'm just gonna show you really quickly how I start a project, uh, syncing up all my video footage and also my lavalier uh, audio, export that into Premiere Pro, and then I use Time Bolt after that, right? So I'm gonna show you that part of my uh, workflow. So this is Pluralize. Uh, this is mainly from Red Giant. And for this project, I'm gonna use a past project that I did with Paul. It's a 1080p project, so that's kind of the reason why I got this, just so I can work faster. But as you can see here, we have many individual clips, and he also used a lavalier mic. I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna say video, video footage, because all of these clips comes from the same camera. I can put this in one folder. So to begin with, I'm gonna drop my video footage inside of Pluralize. It's gonna start working. And then I'm gonna use, I'm gonna drop in the lavalier audio, drop that in there. So I'm just gonna let uh, Pluralize do its job. And then meanwhile, I have caffeine. It says ready to synchronize. Simply click synchronize and we're gonna see it like uh, do its magic. <laughs> Boom, all right. Now, as you can see here, the first half of a good chunk of the video in the beginning, he mainly he did not use a lavalier mic. There's only a section in the video where he uses the lavalier mic. However, Pluralize does a good job of like lining up the video clips in order, right? In the order that they were filmed. So I'm going to hit export timeline. I'm going to uncheck move on synchronized clips towards the end because we want to keep it in the linear order that they were filmed at. I'm going to rename this. So I'm just going to save the sync. Just rename this really quick so I can find it. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to hit export. After hitting export, the XML file appears, right? So we can put plural eyes away. We don't need it. So now I'm going to open up Premiere Pro. I created a new project file to make sure we start off fresh. So I'm gonna drop in my XML file that I just, cre that I just created with uh, Pluralize into Premiere Pro. And the cool thing with uh, Pluralize, pretty much similar to Time Boat, is that it imports all your footage and it also creates a sequence uh, matching your footage. So uh, it's a cool thing about Pluralize. All right, so there you go. As you can see, it dropped in my footage, the file that I created, and it dropped in the audio in its own folder, right? And here is the sequence that I created. If I double click on that, and as you can see, pretty much everything got dropped in here in place. Now, before I continue with this um, this video, I just want to show you something really quick. Now, for the most part, this is an average video, right? We have two separate cameras, as you can see here. This is from another project. We have uh, the GH5 and a GH, another separate GH5 that Paul has. So in this folder, there's many video clips. These are all 4K. And here's another, the second camera, and these are 4K as well. And then here's the audio files. This is from his uh, lavalier mic. So we have two separate cameras and each footage from each camera had gets its own folder along with the uh, audio files, which has its own one folder because Paul uses a lavalier mic. So it's only one uh, mic source, right? 
So I'm going to drop these in Pluralize. I just want to show you uh, an average, um, the typical video that I work on, so I can show you the difference. Boop, boop, doop, doop, doop. All right, so once it's ready to synchronize, I'm going to synchronize this project. And uh, as you can see, Pluralize does a good job to synchronize the lavalier mic to our uh, camera footage. All right, once that's done, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to export this. All right, I'm just going to put this on the desktop to be quick. Export that. So I'm going to create a new bin. This is for, let's just call it, uh, I don't know, average video. Going to drop in that XML, XML file that I just created with Pluralize. And for the most part, let me maximize this. This is basically my what I started with every time I have one uh, a, a major project from Paw. Right, you can see like all the videos are scattered everywhere. Yeah, so usually what I do to begin with is like I organize this, you know, kind of put this back in its uh, right rightful place. Select the audio files, put this back in its rightful place. Usually I make sure everything's synced up. And then since I have the lavalier audio, I don't need like the audio from the video clips itself. So I just get rid of them. And then pretty much I have a macro that in between the empty spots here, uh, I just get rid of like the dead areas visually. I just continue doing that until basically I get rid of any empty gaps between the video clips. I'm just doing this very quickly to show what I'm talking about. Yeah, every time we film these videos of him building the computer, we leave the lavalier mic on. So we leave the audio mic on on purpose. So every time when we film and then we stop and then we film again and then we stop, as you can see, these individual clips. So when I import it instead of Pluralize, we use the audio file almost as a timeline. That way it gets synced up in the proper order as we filmed it, right? So then when you import it here into my project file, everything is in the right place. So that's what I do, right? So after I basically cut out the gaps in between the video clips, like I just showed you like that, then from there, basically I export a uh, the video file, a small version of it into Timebolt. That way it can detect the silence. And then I use uh, Timebolt's information to cut out the dead silence here, right? But all right, so as you can see here, basically cut out all the gaps in between my video clips, right? Now this part in the end, the reason why it's red is because these are not synchronized. The only reason why they're not synchronized is mainly because this is footage, uh, mainly B-roll that we use, always filmed towards the end. So there's no lavalier mic for this video clips to sync to. That's why it's turned red, right? But for the most part, I delete that, right? This is what an average video looks like, right? But uh, I'm gonna get back to this guy on, uh, later, right? I wanna get back to my original video that I was working on. As I mentioned, this is a vlog video. As you can see here, he's doing handheld work. So. The reason why I mainly wanted to start out with this video is because there are certain parts of the video that um, they're silent, but they do not need to be deleted, right? So basically what I developed is a method that I call myself as the cookie cutter <laughs> method, right? The thing is there's parts of the video where we do a uh, time lapse. Let's see if we need to find a spot. So for example, in this part of the video, IRS like send you need so in this part of the video, he's basically just showing him packing the product away because he's giving away a PC. There's a lot of personal discussion going on here and there's stuff like that, but for the most part, what I do is like, uh, I delete the audio and then basically all I do is I increase it, the speed wise, basically kind of do like almost like a montage. So yeah, there's no audio, but usually uh, I'm showing what's going on. I just speed it up, right? And like I have some music in the background, so. That's video that I want to keep, but I do not want to delete any of it. That's why I use, like again, my method, what I call the cookie cutter method. So I'm going to show you what that is. Once everything, all the video clips is in, in place, along with our lavalier mic footage uh, synced up, what I do is basically I disable the video section. That way I get a black, uh, blank screen, right? Then I render this out. I'm going to file, export, export media. And for this part, I actually created a preset uh, to export this specific file that I'm about to uh, create for Timebolt. So this is something I do exclusively for Timebolt itself, right? So for the format, it's in H.264. And for the preset, I, I guess I saved it as a cookie cutter render. And basically all I did was I maximized the quality of the audio. That way Timebolt has a lot of information audio wise for it to work properly. And the video, I actually reduced it to a very small video size, right? As you can see here in the video setting, I reduced the video size. So it just uh, render out quicker. So for the width, it's basically 178 and the height is 100. And basically I just used a very, very small bit rate, right? Like I said, I'm, I'm not going for video quality. I just need to export a video file that has both the video and the audio layer. But in this case, the video layer is a very low quality, but the audio, it's a super high quality, right? So I'm gonna export this guy. Again, I'm gonna put this on my desktop just, to, just so I can find it quicker. 
I'm gonna name this time bullet example, save it. I'm gonna queue this guy. And because this is a very small file, it's, it just renders out very quick, right? So that should not take long whatsoever. All right, so it's a media encoder. Just let it do its thing. Let that work. All right, so that took about three minutes to render. Uh, this project is about, I got 50 minutes worth of footage here that got to edit, right? So, you know, that was pretty quick. Now, I'm gonna minimize that for the time being. So this is where I start to use Time Bolt. And actually, this is where Time Bolt comes in handy. So I'm gonna take that file that I just created. As you can see, here's my video. If I double click on it. This is an intro for the video that I'm shooting with you today, Joe. Wednesday, July 4th. Obviously, like I said, it's a black video. All we have is the audio, right? But we need both the video and the audio file for this uh, part of my process. So I'm gonna drop in my uh, file that I just created. All right, so in Time Bolt, of course, it does a good job because I rendered out a video with high quality audio. Obviously, it did a good job of deleting all my uh, all the silent areas. And this part, what I do, and seriously, guys, I actually appreciate that you did this. <laughs> if when I go into settings and the XML export, the selection to create splits but do not delete detected silence. Yeah, this feature is very helpful and I'm glad that you guys created this. Also, the fact that it creates the splits and then it color codes, it color labels the cut areas, that is very helpful. So you guys get a, a very good thumbs up for that. So anyways, this, uh, I make sure it's checked. I hit done, then I export the XML file. Once that gets exported, going back to my Premiere Pro. So usually in Premiere Pro, I create like a bin, just say time bolt. Double click on that. I'm gonna drop in that XML file that I created inside of Time Bolt. I created a sequence, double click on it. As you can see here, I have all this cuts that are color labeled red. And again, I really appreciate that you guys did this. This thing makes my life easier. So if I zoom in here, I can select one of like these cuts that was made in Time Bolt that are labeled red. I can right click on it. I go to label, then I go to select label group. And what that does is basically it selects everything that's similar to that color, right? So I'm going to go to edit, copy. I'm going to go back towards a project that I've been working on. I'm going to go to the beginning of the timeline. So I create a new track for my video and I create a new audio track. And then from there, to paste this, I want to make sure that the top layer that's empty and the bottom layer for the audio that is empty are selected. So when I paste, it gets pasted on top and underneath uh, my project files, right? It does not like overlap. So when I hit paste, I'm going to edit, paste. See, all these cuts are on top of my video layer and all the audio tracks that are cut out are underneath my audio tracks, right? And this section that has the lavalier mic, I don't, obviously I don't need the audio, so I'm just going to delete that to keep it simple. Now this is where time bullet comes in handy. Now I'm going to delete this area here because it's empty. So I'm just going to right click on it and delete track, keep it simple. So in the beginning of the video, I'm going to hide my camera for a bit. So if I start playing, this is an intro for the video that I'm shooting with you today, Joe. So as you can see, the, there's like, a, you can see the video track. We don't need to see that. And also we don't need to hear the audio that got cut out. So I'm just going to mute these, disable them. This is an intro for the video that I'm shooting with you today, Joe. Wednesday, July 14th. Uh, starting with an intro. Okay, so here's a good example of how I use the cutouts from Time Bolt. It is this. Actually, let me do this. I'm gonna change the color of that track just to be simple. So the green is basically my footage that I wanna work with and the red is the cutouts from Time Bolt. So in this case, there's a lot of silence, right? So, th so what I can do is I just select the, these guys, I head down, it overlaps the silent areas. I delete that and I can select also my audio the audio cutouts, I hit up, then it cuts out the audio silent areas. They're still selected, I can hit delete, and I'm left with a bunch of gaps, right? But I can select this section, and you can actually, you can go to sequence, and I can hit close gap. Now I have a hotkey for that, but I'm just showing you what I do. So when I select all this, see I select the close gap, it closes the gaps for me, and everything gets rippled down, right? So it's all even. Now the reason why I work like this, it's basically because, as I said, there's certain parts of the video they do not want to cut out. Here's an example. Uh... Now, this part of the video, he's basically packing away the PC that he's given away. So obviously, I do not need to delete any silent areas because for the most part, I delete the audio here. The cutout section, the time was time created. 
And usually what I do is just basically select this, I right click, I go to speed and duration, and I increase the speed of this to save 500. On the final render, this, this basically works as a time lapse of what he's doing, right? And then, you know, usually this part, I have like music going on in the background and showing what he's doing, right? Now, obviously this is very crude. <laughs> I do a better job than what I'm showing you, but I'm showing you why I work the way I do, right? So basically I just go through like the entire video. Start wide, but then come in when I start showing the, the stuff. Okay. So obviously I can see here that he doesn't talk for a while. I could just cut out this whole section right here. Simply select that, delete. We have the Zotac RTX 3080 Ti. This has been re 5950X. Brand new, sealed, in the box. Fortunately, box. So I can just pop it back in there. This is going to the UK. That's pretty far. And then this is going to France. Because, you know, France. So obviously I can see here that he's talking into the camera. So this is where an area where I do use the cutout areas from Time Boat. So there's a lot of uh, silent areas here. So again, just to help me save some time, I can select all these guys, head down, it cuts that out, hit delete, then I select the audio cutouts made from Time Boat, I hit up, I hit delete again, then I can just select all this, and I have a hawk key to close the gaps in Premiere Pro, but in this case again, just to show you it's in sequence, close gap, so now basically I play that back. I warned Chris that it comes with a terrible curse, slightly more reasonable GPU configuration. <clears throat> this case also came with a drain, uh, okay. The case also came with a quick disconnect for the yeah, then basically, you know, I just start, you know, deleting what I don't need. Also you know, it does help me, help me save some time. So basically, yeah, as I edit the video, basically I use these cutouts that I created with Time Boat as I need to, right? And as, uh, like I said, there's certain areas I do not need to cut out the silent areas. As you can see here, you were doing more of the like, montage stuff of him just packing away stuff. So I'll just delete these because I don't need them. I'll delete the audio for this area. I'll just right click speed and duration and again I'll just maybe say increase it to 500 and then like I'll add some uh, music in the background while he's like you know preparing the box for him uh, that he's going to use to deliver the PC right so yeah that's basically how I use these cutout things what I'm calling the cookie cutter right when I need them I use them and it just helps me save some time big time so I could just select this entire section here where he is giving out an, uh, an explanation of how to use the computer you know, I can just use my cutouts here just to help me like save some time. I select them, then I can just close the gap. Then I just start it, you know, going over it and start deleting the little uh, mistakes that he makes. Squeeze and fill, just like that. Oh, this does have a cap on the end. Now, once you start filling the reservoir, it stays full. <clears throat> what am I, am I saying? How to turn it off? Yeah, little sections like here, obviously it's, just, it's a lot easier for me to just select and delete quickly, right? Uh, it stays full. In order to turn the pipe plug. So we're gonna take our main 24 pin connector graphics card. <clears throat> I see all this is not needed, so it's just a lot simpler for me to select and delete. And we also want to unplug the supplemental CPU power, so that is all you got to do is plug in. See, here's a good example of where Typo comes in handy because it just saves me uh, some time to cut out like the gaps between these clips here. It's off, and then you will switch it on, let the pump run, and again, as soon as the water back off, eh, let the pump run, and as soon as switch back off, and fill and repeat until it... Then, you know, obviously I select the... Uh, the cuts here and I'll add like a little transition just to like you know smooth things out, right? That's how I use time boat is in this method. And going back to the other example that I was talking about that is more, I guess, scattered video clips all over the place. Yeah, I do the same thing, right? But again, there's certain areas of the video. There are certain parts of the video where again, I don't need to delete anything because basically we're doing a time lapse, right? Where basically he's just building the computer from scratch. So I need to show um, everything that's going on in those areas, so you know, there's no need for me to use time boat in these sections of the video, right? Yeah, here's an example from Paul's videos that I'm talking about. We do time lapse. Yeah, as you see here, basically, you know, there's a lot of going on here. Uh, some footage that sped up, you know, just short little clips of him doing stuff and so on and so forth, right? So obviously, in this section, I don't need to use time bolt to like cut out uh, any information because I need to save that, right? Yeah, that's basically it. With the extension that you guys created, um, I feel the extension works well for, for videos that are more quick. For example, lately I've been using my phone to film a lot, say if I'm gonna do a vlog or something like that, then obviously, you know, I can use the extension for that kind of footage because it's one video file and there's not much going on besides me talking into the phone, right? So that makes more sense using the extension for those types of clips, right? 
Yeah, it looks messy, obviously, because I'm trying to get through this video quickly, but that's basically how I work and how I use Timeboat. And um, yeah, that's basically all I got to say. I'll post my Twitter uh, account here. If you guys want to contact me, anybody from the Timeboat development team, I'd be more than happy to uh, work with you guys because I do like this product and obviously uh, I would like to see you guys succeed in all this stuff. Also, <laughs> I do like the product itself because it has saved me a lot of time. So any other ways you are able to improve this, it's going to benefit me and everybody else and it's a win-win situation. So anyways, thanks for watching this video. I hope it helps. I really appreciate uh, what you guys have created. <laughs> this thing has been a massive time saver and uh, yeah, I do appreciate uh, this software a lot. So that's all I got to say. Thanks for watching. Take care and peace.